Hey gang, it's Ms. Loy. Welcome back to Let's Build a Castle. This is part 3. In the previous two parts we've built this giant thing and this is only a half of it. So in this episode we're gonna be walking on the Great Hall and the tower adjacent to it. We're gonna have an amazing time lapse at the end of everything that we did. It's gonna be cool, so let's go! Alright folks, we're doing this in survival, so I already farmed up a lot of terracotta, a lot of spruce logs, a whole lot of brown mushroom blocks, and two double chests of deep slate. I also have been oxidizing uh, a lot of copper, if I can find the shulker box for it. It's been in my entry this entire time. This is nowhere near the amount we need for the roof. I actually already experimented and uh, tried to calculate how long it's gonna take for all of this copper to oxidize. Uh, the answer is around... Uh, our 150 hours, something like that. It's uh, kind of a nightmare. Luckily, we are gonna be today here forever because we have the entire Grand Hall and also the tower to figure out, and uh, that's gonna be quite a workload. Luckily, we already have quite a few things covered. In the first episode, we established the palette, the block palette that we're gonna be using, which is uh, Terracotta, copper, deep slate, mushroom blocks, spruce. We already have visualized the footprint of the Grand Hall and we're gonna visualize the actual walls of it by using the blueprint mod idea from the last episode, which is where we take a screenshot of the thing and try to make it up, uh, kind of sketch it up using paint programs. Fortunately, we won't necessarily have to do that too much because I already figured out the overall approximate shape of what I want this to be. It's not exact because it's made on an actual whiteboard in actual real life and physical media is just so inferior to Minecraft blocks, but I think this gives us enough pointers to know what is it we want to do. Okay, so here's the plan and this is going to be a little bit very highbrow architectural stuff, but <laughs> we're gonna take this area, right, and we're gonna just paste it over here and then we're gonna take these towers, or at least these tower elements, one here, put another one here. <laughs> this tower can go uh, nope, around here-ish on the actual tower. This is a corridor, so of course this segment is gonna fit and uh, over here we're just gonna put uh, this tower again but bigger <laughs> see it looks completely stupid right now but it's actually incredibly accurate to the plan i had on my whiteboard yeah yeah something's telling me this is actually gonna work so I decided to start with the front door of the area. You can see I actually modified the patterns in the windows because they had to be too wide and uh, I wanted them to be wider than the other ones anyway. The middle section was actually quite intricate too. You can tell usually I do one or two blocks of the overbite or overhang at the top. This time I did all of three. That's because there are three levels of overhang here. Deep slate, the actual wall made of spruce and a yellow clay section in between. The corner towers I used on this project are actually the same towers we did in episode 2 on the cathedrally part. To recognize them, I felt that they fit way better than the ones from the corridor section. They really were the easy part, I just plopped 4 of them on the corners of the area and then had to fill in the walls between them. The back side was ultimately just mirrored from the front side, with the difference that the door section was swapped for another window. The remaining walls I've just given a spiderweb kind of looking pattern, uh, basically using the same bend and the same bends as we did on the flying buttresses. Yes, these four buttresses are basically embedded into a wall, but hey, it's a very nice looking pattern. And also I really didn't think like adding any windows in that area would make any sense because it's like a tiny corner. So I just let it be a solid wall, you know, for a change. Finally, my friend Leara, who also plays on the True Bedrock server, helped me mirror the wall on the opposite side of the building and fill in the roof and the ceiling, bringing us to the completion of this floor. I would just like to point out that uh, this took an entire day of survival building, but was only 5 minutes of uh, actual Minecraft footage. Yeah, this video is gonna take a long time to make. 
So what we have here is an incredibly spacious room, which I look forward to eventually decorating. Unfortunately, we won't be doing it in this video, so you'll have to either subscribe or just follow my truly bedrock let's play, which is the survival series in which I'm actually believing in this. However, until then, we still have a lot more to build. How much more? Well, my friends, it's basically uh, an entire Lord of the Rings movie worth of building. That's right, I'm talking, of course, about two towers. First one will be right on top of here. I actually want to uh, use this area as more or less a viewing platform with a giant tower down the middle. And by giant, I mean it's going to be very tall and it's going to be fairly girthy. Uh, it's essentially going to be in the shape of a cross. And now, don't get me wrong, this is not going to be the exact shape right now. But just for you to understand what I'm doing, I'll be doing basically a facade on this side, mid, uh, centered down this middle, and then continuing it down this side up to here, where another facade is gonna be. So this tower is gonna be uh, basically cross-shaped until it isn't at the very, very top. But that's not even what I'm, I'll be working on right now. Right now, I just wanted to outline this for you because, I mean... I mean, look at this. This is a nice footprint because it's going to be very girthy and big. And we get to actually have like a widow's walk of incredible size. We'll get all of the, you know, picturesque views. We get to stare at my ugly, ugly mob farm. Hi there, it's horrifying. And most importantly, we get to stare at the copper field, which is progressively oxidizing. That is all copper for this project, trust me. Point is, there's going to be a tower up there. And there's going to be a tower down here. This one, I actually want to work on right now. This will be much uh, more of a straightforward tower. Essentially move something like this. I understand that as, a scale, as far as scale models go, this is actually very, very unrepresentative. Allow me to modify. Yeah, that's more like it. Basically, it's gonna start with a fairly girthy foundation, go thinner, thinner, thinner at every step of the way, and then at the top there's gonna be a room, or at least a building kind of style, uh, and then at the top there's gonna be a floor that once again is gonna step out and be a little bit girthier than the, than the shaft leading up to it, and a giant triangle up top to kind of mirror, kind of call back to these towers and that tower there. It's actually going to be bigger than that one. It's actually that one, but bigger. And hey, would you look at that? This is actually a fairly okay gravestone design. Or like a fence post, if you will. Yeah, I'm proud of this. This is a good plan. But before we get to the tower, we actually need to work on the little corridor leading up to it. And I say little because, well, it is going to be little. Yeah, look at that. This facade is all it's going to be. And uh, you will notice something here, if you are very, very spotty and noticey, that, and that is that if we actually get this wall and mirror it onto this side, you'll notice that the walls don't actually reach an apex. Meaning that if I would to continue a roof from here, it would rise up to here, go flat, and then lower down there. And that's kind of intentional. And the reason why is because I actually want there to be a gap. I am gonna make a roof here a little bit more flat, which is fine, it's not gonna go look nice on its own, but it will look really, really nice much later when we actually build this tower and the second tower up there and put a bridge between them. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's gonna look absolutely amazing, which is why we need this roof to not interfere with that bridge. Because the lower the, this roof is, the more head space, the more breathing space the decoration of the bridge are gonna get. And that's what we're really in for. Right now though, I'm gonna mirror this area and I'm gonna wireframe the tower at least a little bit. We'll see how much of it I'll do before I find something else to tell you all about. Oh yeah, and this is also the first time in this entire Let's Play where I'm using chiseled deep slate. Even though my whole building is made out of deep slate. Just because I don't necessarily like it, I really can't tell what it's meant to be. Like, is that a shulker? Is that 
a, a, a warden? Is that a... What is this? What are you? Why are you here? But it is a nice combo breaker when you just basically have the same textures everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And it kind of looks nice lined up like this, so I'm just letting it be down here. But nowhere else. This is the only area. So here it is, the wireframe of the tower without the tip, mind you. The tip is not yet there. And the reason why the tip is not yet there is that the copper is not yet oxidized for the tip to be made out of, because it's mostly the roof. It's mostly the roof. However, it already looks pretty cool, and by pretty cool I mean it's incomprehensible. We can't tell where one silhouette ends and another begins, because we're looking at the tower right now, basically in X-ray mode. And that is something that I'll be working on right now. I have the uh, terracotta, the spruce wood planks, the barrels, the mushroom blocks, all of the blocks that we used for the, uh, for the walls around here, around the rest of the castle, all of them will be coming into play in this tower. And uh, by, from here on, it's basically just a paint bucket tool. I'm just gonna be filling in the gaps between these uh, wireframes, which also should make for a pretty fun time lapse. So allow me to unsheave my camera account and let's get going. And so this tower is finally done this year. A slice of something special. Let's take a little bit further away just to take a look at it. And especially because we now have a spyglass, which I can basically use as a laser pointer. First of all, I just want to say that this general shape looking like a rocket ship is not entirely intentional. It's not intentional whatsoever, actually. However, I did stumble upon a few pictures of actual real-life cathedrals where the towers look like a spacecraft. And you know what that means? That means creative license. And also that potentially medieval people tried to reach for the moon. Uh, and so they did. Now, looking at it, there is one thing that is absolutely, most definitely gonna jump into your view and that is this middle piece that I installed. It does have the general shape of some sort of a medieval banister and naturally they wouldn't make one this big, I don't think. However, putting the letter T because this is the shape of a gust tier down the middle and uh, added the gust eyebrows over it and uh, honestly this is just random symbology gibberish that I added. It's, uh, those, these dots don't necessarily have any sort of meaning, uh, but I am very much happy with how this entire segment turned out. As far as towers go, they do tend to be a little bit boring down the middle sh of the shaft. And I think that we avoided that, and I'm quite proud of the way we did that. Unfortunately, however, this project, this part of the project also exhausted my copper supply, or at least my oxidized copper supply. And we still have an entire extra tower to figure out. That's right, my friends, if you look at this, you will notice that there definitely is something missing down the middle. Right now, visually, this place is entirely too heavy on the right, way too heavy on the left, and way too empty down the middle. So we'll be putting another tower down here, just like I promised when we were messing around in paint. And I think I know where I'm gonna get the oxidized copper for the roof. 
of that middle piece. There's actually an extra way to save up on the materials while also making your build more intricate that the builders of Minecraft have long ago invented. In fact, this technique is so common among the Minecrafters that when I posted screenshots of this over on the Minecraft build subreddit, this is what everybody said I need to do. Texturization. Now let me explain what that generally means. When builders in Minecraft say texturize, they generally mean that you need to apply a little bit more variety to the particular shapes that you already have built. For example, this wall right here looks looking pretty plain, and we don't really want to mess around with the shape of it as much. However, we could diversify the block palette here, here and there, without actually introducing any new colors. Kinda squinting at it, you can recognize the brown mushroom blocks as chipped off parts of the tower, where the age is starting to show and where the building has been sun blasted, wind blasted, basically blasted out of its prime. We can increase this effect by adding to the fray light grey terracotta, for example, which actually goes really really well in the texturization kind of way with the brown mushroom blocks. This way, by introducing to the copper uh, roofs that we already made, warped stairs and prismarine brick stairs, we can not only make the build look a little bit nicer, but also save up on some copper stairs. Now there's a little bit of a danger to this technique where uh, you might end up adding too much of a particular material here and there, or maybe making it uh, overall texture entirely too noisy, making the eye of the viewer kind of glaze over and either decide that hey, it's complicated so that makes it pretty, or otherwise just recognize it as a block vomit and not even be able to discern a shape. And that's an issue, I'm gonna tell you, and that's an issue that is really hard to avoid. What helps me personally in these cases is usually trying to add some sort of a real-life logic to the way the blocks are dispersed. For example, if a darker block is to the lower part of the roof, then our eye might recognize that as water damage, for example. Whereas if a lighter block is somewhere on a plain area or higher to the top, we might recognize that as sunblasted variant of the material. Basically, there's a lot to this art and experimentation in, is everybody's friend, but I'm pretty sure, but I'm pretty sure that we more or less nailed it around here. And saved a couple stacks of copper. But enough talk about that, uh, I have the footprint of the final tower pretty much planned out right in front of you. I have the overall shaped of it already planned too, and it pretty much uses all the techniques and tricks that we already discussed over the series. So, at this point, I'm just gonna let you enjoy the time lapse and potentially shut up. And that's our castle, all done and finished, looking absolutely wonderful except in the spots where uh, there still needs to happen a lot of terraforming. 
But hey, that's what I'll be doing on the Truly Better series, uh, amongst other things. We still need to do the interior, we, we still need to do a lot of <clears throat> housekeeping. So do subscribe to my channel if you aren't subscribed yet. And hey, while you're down there in the comments, please do tell me what else I could build and make a let's build out of. This really reignited my passion for making these type of videos and I really am hoping that I could continue and make more of these. Also special thanks to my soulmate Liara who was incredible help. She helped me mirror a couple of walls here and there. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Do subscribe, do leave a like if you want more of these type of videos. This has been Zloy XP. This has been Let's Build a Castle. To be continued, have a good one. Bye bye.